I remember being told on a, an MSc course, which I failed to complete. I was too busy setting up a clinic. Always um, go back. Sorry? You can always go back. Oh, God, I, I'd love to. It's just even funnier than time. Um, MSc course, particularly at elite level, um, the athletes concerned are exercising at the very limits of their envelope of capability, if you like. I can't remember the terms that were actually used. So they, it could be just a small injury that pushes them over the edge of that and is catastrophic for them because then they've got to take so long to recover. Is that a concept which rings any bells with you? Uh, all, all the time. Um, and, and that was really you know, what I was saying. If you think athletes now, they're fitter, they're faster, they're stronger, they've got more endurance... They're more skilled than they were when I started 40 plus years ago. And therefore their tolerance is, is less. And that's what I was questioning, whether we as clinicians are the problem. The fact that strength and conditioning, which really wasn't a career 20, 25 mm. years ago, we're, we can make these athletes so out of this world physiologically. Um, whether we're taking them closer and closer to that breaking strain and and our ability to put people back together again. Injuries that finished people's careers 30, 40 years ago, now we can put them back together just yeah. for the next next injury. Yeah. And uh, are we actually doing the right thing? You know, Because are we really setting them up for later arthritis? And I, I'm, I'm sure you see in your practice as well, people coming in in their 30s and 40s and their joints are already wearing and I said, you know, I, I played rugby till I was 43, which wasn't really a very good idea um, with my, my size. Um, but, you know, i am got all of those issues now from, from playing a contact sport for far too long. And w what I'm seeing now, and I don't know whether you're seeing in your practice, is, is they're coming in younger and younger. And so you're now getting people in their 20s coming in with arthritis in their knees or their hips or their ankles. And I, I think it's going, this is going to be a trend that we're, going to mm. see and it's i'm giving evidence at a at a, at a westminster forum next month on duty of care and safeguarding issues and i i often see uh teenagers or even younger coming into my clinic with overuse injuries and you sit down with them and their parents and you go through their week and you look at how much they're doing they're, they've got, they're often not having a day away day week off and I, th I think as a very crude rule of thumb I, I tend to look at the age of the of the child and I think if, if they're doing more than an hour a week uh, times their age then they're probably overdoing it so if you're 10 if they're doing 11 12 hours I think it's too much in the, um, there's one in one of your books I think it's the knife in the fast lane you talk about something about the biggest jump being from three training sessions a week to four I think is that still something that uh, is true yeah and that's kind of in uh, ribbons unscientific rules of running <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, I talked about it to a patient this week as well um, I, I think I said at all age all ages I think I think uh, your body needs a chance to recover and I think for all of us uh, we underestimate the benefit of the recovery time because yeah. essentially what you're doing with a training session is that you're you're pushing your your musculoskeletal system and your cardiovascular system to a certain level and then it's got to respond and recover if you're training or running four days a week rather than three days a week that means inevitably you're not going there's going to be one of those sessions which is going to follow another another one uh, and you're not going to have that rest. 